بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا چینل ان ٹو ڈے سیشن وی ول ڈسکس این سی کیوز اینڈ ایس سی کیو ریگارڈنگ رینولا ڈیٹیل پیتھو فیزیالوجی اینڈ ٹریٹمنٹ آف رینولا ہیو بین ڈسکسڈ ان پارٹ ون دا لنک فار دیٹ ویڈیو از دیئر ان دی ڈسکرپشن So let's see what is the first multiple choice question regarding ranula. A cystic translucent mass in the floor of mouth on one side of ranulum is. Options are epidermoid cyst, dermoid cyst, ranula, calculus in Wharton's duct. So as we know, dermoid cyst is always there in the midline. But here in this case, cystic translucent mass is away from the midline. So it cannot be dermoid cyst. Epidermoid cyst as an inclusion cyst again. Then calculus in the Warthens duct. Yes, submandibular duct opens on the side of the lingual frenulum at the floor of the mouth. But the calculus there, that will give a firm appearance. So the choice left behind is a ranula, which is a cystic mass. and it is present there in the lateral aspect of the floor of the mouth. Now this is a university question, SEQ. A 30-year-old female presented with a swelling in the floor of the mouth more towards right side. So this is on the right side of the floor of the mouth away from the midline from last six months it is progressively increasing in size and it is not associated with pain or other constitutional symptoms because it is there from last six months and no pain no constitutional symptoms so acute etiology is ruled out automatically. On examination, there is small, soft, bluish swelling in the floor of the mouth. So from our discussion in the part one, we know that bluish tinge or frog belly appearance, soft cystic swelling away from the midline at the floor of the mouth, slowly progressing in their inner size. It is nothing else but ranula. So let's see what the questions were being asked. So first question the same. What is the most probable diagnosis and its types? Name the differential diagnosis. What treatment options are available? And what is the other term used for tongue tie? Now first three questions are related with this short essay question while the fourth one it is a theoretical question. not directly related with this scenario. So, what is the most probable diagnosis? As just by reading this statement, we came to the conclusion that this is a ranula, which is a cystic, soft, slowly progressing, painless, no constitutional symptoms, away from the midline at the floor of the mouth. That is typical picture of ranula. And we know that there are three types. One is simple ranula when it is confined to the floor of the mouth and related with the sublingual gland. Then it has got a ramifications or finger-like projections. Then we call it as cavernous or branching type of ranula. And sometimes it presents in the neck, upper part of the neck, in submental or submandibular region. And at the same time, there is intraoral swelling as well. That's what we call as plunging type of ranula. So these are its three types. The second question was regarding the differential diagnosis. Very close contestant of course it is the dermoid cyst and dermoid cyst we know it always occurs there in the midline and it is whitish uh, on inspection while ranula is away from the midline and it is frog belly type or bluish discoloration. Mucosil, it is again a mucus retention cyst. The most common site in the oral cavity is the inner aspect of the lower lip 
but still it can occur at the floor of the mouth and on the tongue as well but it is usually smaller in size calculus of the submandibular duct yes warthans duct opens on the side of the lingual frenulum at the floor of the mouth but as we know it will give the firm appearance on inspection and palpation then benign or malignant tumors of the oral cavity should also be considered in the differential diagnosis and lastly just to complete the list we can add ludwig's angina as well but as we know ludwig's angina is associated with severe pain high grade fever and that is an acute condition what treatment options are available of course surgical treatment is the treatment of choice for ranula but there are different options are available with the recurrence rate high with incision and drainage and marsupialization then we can go for excision of the ranula especially in case of when it is simple ranula confined to the oral cavity 100% success rate can be achieved just by excision of the ranula but treatment of choice still will be excision of the ranula with excision of the sublingual salivary glands then we know that laser ablation nowadays and cryo surgery has also been used in isolation or in combination after marsupialization for the treatment of ranulas surgery is a treatment of choice but especially in plunging type of ranula we have to open it from the neck as well so it is associated with technical difficulties as well as morbidity and recurrence rate may also be high and sometimes especially in cavernous type of ranula due to its thin walls or ramifications in various tissue planes it is not feasible to completely excise the ranula so in those cases uh, intracystic injections of sclerosing agents like ok432 as a sclerotropic agent has been used so these are different treatment options available the fourth question as i told you was not directly related with the uh, scenario but theoretically they asked what is the other term used for tongue tie the other term for tongue tie we know it is called ankyloglossia we know that uh, this is the problem which is a congenital problem it is present at birth and it is due to short lingual frenulum and lingual frenulum is a fibrous band which attaches the under surface of the tongue with the floor of the mouth so when it is too short it hampers the movement of the tongue and when the movement of the tongue is hampered then it can cause problem with eating and speaking but they say if one can protrude the tongue tip of the tongue up to the lower incisors then there is no problem with the tongue tie so this is how it will look like you see so small lingual frenulum is that tongue is double folded when the patient tries to protrude the tongue so this is the lingual frenulum on this side and the treatment is how this we have to release this surgically under local anesthesia or if patient is adult elder weak elder child then we can go under general anesthesia here i have a scenario small scenario a healthy 6 year girl she presented with a 3 week history of a lesion under the tongue there was no history of trauma or congenital occurrence before and this is how it was looking like on the side of the lingual frenulum bluish tinge this swelling is there so is it retention cyst of sublingual gland or retention cyst of submandibular gland or extravasation cyst of sublingual gland or extravasation cyst of submandibular gland so this is food for thought and i would like to see your answers here in the comments so please give me the answer for this question and if you think that this discussion was beneficial for you please subscribe share and like the channel thank you very much for watching this